Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. And today we're delving back into the Sermon on the Mount, picking up in chapter 5 of Matthew's Gospel, verses 17 to 20. It's a, a little block of teaching where Jesus comments on the relationship between his teaching and the teaching of the Old Testament scriptures or Hebrew scriptures, what he refers to as the law and the prophets. And this is what he says. Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Boom, that's quite a strong last line. It says, this is important, guys. It's about entering the kingdom of heaven. Um, he adds this block of teaching at the beginning of, of a section, which we'll be looking at in the coming uh, weeks and months, um, where he introduces a teaching from the law and the prophets, and then he clarifies it. He says, do, you've heard that it said, um, do not murder, for example, but I tell you, and then he goes on. Now, on a surface level, you could say, oh, he's abolishing the law and the prophets. He's trumping them. He's overriding them, but actually, if you look at it, as Jesus says here, right at the beginning, he doesn't abolish them, he clarifies, he goes deeper, he perfects, he, he, he fulfills. He gets down to the nub of the issue, he goes to the heart of the law. He looks at the spirit of the law, not just the letter of the law, like the Pharisees and the teachers of the law that he criticises in this passage as well. He says, you've got to come with me down into the heart of righteousness and, and find out what this is all about. Um, he talks about here obeying or practicing um, this teaching and obedience really is high on Christ's agenda for us. We're saved by grace but the, the grateful heart responds with righteousness to God, responds with obedience and so Jesus would have us obey. Is there anything this week that you know you need to obey Jesus on? Uh, an area or a, a kind of node of uh, disobedience in your life that you need to deal with? And more than that, we also need to recognise here there's a teaching component here. Jesus says, practice and teach these commands. And right at the end of Matthew's Gospel, in the Great Commission, he says, doesn't he, go and make disciples of all nations. We remember that. Baptising them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. We, we know that bit. And then it says, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. I think we downplay that. We forget that there is a teaching component at the heart of mission. We're called to be teachers of the way of Christ. Who this week could you come alongside and instruct in the way of Christ, helping them to live life in all its fullness according to his teaching?